Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you start to finish how I tool this oak leaf and acorn wallet pattern. Uh, and this is included in the new volume two of my leather tooling patterns book. But I have it cut in here, or uh, not cut in here, I have it transferred here, ready to cut in. So let's set that one aside and we're gonna get right rolling here. So when you cut those lines, it's really important that you keep those that stem there following through that it's kind of that main center center line uh, that's going to be the focal point when you look at those leaves so we want to keep the distance on those nice and even as they taper down towards each other down at the tip there now we're going to roll through cut these outside lines and notice when I come at those points, I'm not gonna actually connect those with my knife. Um, we've gone through that in pretty good detail if you've been through my uh, tooling course online there or in person. But the reason for those is we don't wanna create a weak point in that leather. So we're gonna connect those with our bevel rather than with our knife. Now this, this point here, there and there where these those leaves are rolled up on the edge it's important to get those lines fading close to that outside line but not crossing it and that's gonna really help to get the realistic look of those folding up as we tool that out get the rest of that outside now here's another one whether it folds up here so as i bring that down I'm gonna make sure that's close but not crossing there I'm going to work on this other leaf here first, and then I'll come back and pick up my acorns there at the end. And you don't necessarily have to cut any of this in in one particular order, but it's just how I'm choosing to cut these in. Okay, again, here's another one that's Fold it up, so bring that down close, but not crossing. And when we bevel that out, it's gonna be a lot easier to get that bevel close and get that realistic look to it. All right, now for our acorns. get those all cut in all right now we're set we're ready to go to our bevel i'm gonna grab here what i'm using is an xx steep checkered bevel from barry king uh, i really like the the impression this bevel gets it's a nice sharp impression doesn't cast too much shadow out there but it gives a really nice look to that Different people are going to have different techniques to tooling an oak leaf and their patterns may look a little different. Um, so I'm not saying this is the only way by any means. It's just how I tool them and I hope that you can find some value in that and helps you as you develop your own style with tooling these. Notice as I'm beveling, I'm not fighting this bevel to get down in those corners or around there. I'm actually going to come back with a round bevel that's going to fit in there really nice. I'm moving my way down my pattern and I'm beveling everything I can reach from this direction. 
and then I'll turn that pattern over and bevel everything from the other direction. Now, all that's for is for efficiency, keep speed up in your tooling. Every time you spin that leather around, it takes time. So the more efficient we can be, the more profitable you can be if you're running a business or just the more you can get done if you're doing it for a hobby. So all about being efficient anywhere we can. Now I can, oh, almost, can almost caught me there just about flipped it too soon. Got a couple more lines I can get there. Now I'm gonna rotate that around and reach what I can from this direction. And again, there's some of these curved lines in here that I'm not getting all the way because I'm gonna come back with another bevel that's gonna fit in there better. Now this bag I'm moving around here, this is, um, this is just a little weight bag. Helps me keep that leather down in place. So it's not wanting to slide around as much while I'm running those bevels. acorns it's always good to practice running those bevels in both directions right to left and left to right that's gonna help make you a little more versatile in your tooling, be able to fade those lines both directions and, and get through your patterns a lot, a lot easier. All right, now like I said, I'm gonna switch bevels. I'm gonna go to, a, this is a smaller round face bevel, so this bottom face is not flat like the bevel I was just using, but it's rounded, so it's gonna be able to come on the inside of these curves. Nice smooth round lines there. Any of the little tighter round curves, it really fits in there good. And you'll see where we'll come back later with the same tool and use that in place of a lifter as well. See how clean that is on the inside of those? Does such a good job. If you don't have a round face beveler, but you have just a smaller bevel, you can always size down to get inside those curves as well. Which 
Really like the definition that gets us. Especially in here where that's rolled up. Like I said, this is where when we bevel, we'll come back, really fade that line right down towards that outside edge. It's gonna help that overall look to it. Okay, quick little double check, make sure. I think we got all of our wear on those leaves. Now we're just down, got one more down here. And then just on the inside of these acorns, nice and light around there. Okay, we're looking pretty good there. Now I'm gonna move over to what I use for a shader, and I'm gonna use this vertical line thumbprint. Love this tool. Um, but this is gonna. I'm going to use this right here in place of a leaf liner. Being careful not to actually run into that stem with it. And you'll notice the angle is angled up out towards that outside edge. from the tip and fade back as well. The whole time I'm doing that, I'm being mindful of my angle, which way that's there, but then I'm watching this little edge to make sure it's not running over that stem. Okay, I'm gonna roll down on this other. And it's tipped back this way too, so it softens that outside edge. I don't want to see that full tool impression mash down there. Rotating that angle as we move down towards the tip here. Just like a bevel, I'm able to go back through and smooth that up as we go. Okay, now I'm gonna take it to the outside edge and we'll start running some shading out here. I'm gonna get a little bit darker coming out from underneath this piece that's rolled up over itself. And I'm going to start working around this outside here. Again, I'm watching this ridge. I'm wanting to kind of keep that highlighted ridge going and lighten that off there when we get out to that inside curve. So when we come back and lift that up, it's going to really add a lot of depth to that. So I'm going to go real light on that inside curve. There we go, all that just creates that highlighted little ridge around there. Now I'm gonna come to the other side of that same leaf Work my way back down, doing the same thing.
get some shading underneath here, showing the depth of that piece rolled up over itself. Okay, now we're gonna flip over here and do that same thing. So see the difference between those two leaves? Just that extra shading on the outside and getting that little ridge there really kind of brings that leaf to life. Uh, we still have more to do to it, we're not done yet, but I just wanna kind of stop there a second and let you compare those two before we move on. All right, now I'm gonna get a little bit of shadowing underneath that acorn there, showing that's definitely up on top of that leaf. here being going pretty light when it comes down to the inside of those curves and the whole time I'm walking around there I'm going nice and easy smoothing that line up as I go but I'm watch being mindful of that angle I'm not tipping this around keeping it perpendicular to the edge there. I'm always keeping the vertical lines on this tool coming down uh, at a consistent angle back towards that stem. Let's flip that around and we'll work around this way as well. You can almost hear that difference as I'm tapping it. Okay, now while I have this shader out, I'm going to come in here and just really lightly, inside the acorns there, and that's hardly noticeable until you start adding in finish to that. Once we kind of oil, antique, and do some things like that, that's gonna pick up those fine little details like that. Here, and that's nice and easy, and making sure that, that fades out, that it's not a crisp line coming off there. All right, next, we're going to grab a veiner, and this just happens to be a small bit, a small veiner here. It's a scalloped and line veiner, but I'm going to come on the outside of this stem and put in. Some veins there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce that out on the other side and come right off the same point. Same thing on this one here. Notice I have that tool tip pretty good because I don't want to see that full tool impression coming down. It's going to get a lot more natural look when it fades out of there and not just a ka-chunk with a tool. Okay, now I promised I was going to come back to this round bevel and we're going to use that as a lifter again here. Um, when, when I come back with that, I'm just touching up, crisping those corners up in those acorns there. The 
But then on the leaves is where it really comes into play. Underneath those round indents there, I'm able to definition and gets you the depth that you're looking for almost picks that leaf right up off the leather again where that folds over come back lift that back up again because as you're tooling especially when you're doing your shader and running that shader out to create that little highlighted ridge you can kind of mash that leather down a little bit with it, so it's important to come back and touch that up. Kind of brings that work out to the next level a little bit. Okay, I'll turn this one now. Get, the, get inside these ridges. And, Lift those up as well. This kind of provides just a little bit of a different twist to the Kind of the traditional oak leaf patterns but i think it works out all right okay now we're gonna come back with uh actually i'll hold off on that decorative cut i'm gonna run a few different background spaces in here and then we'll finish off with our decorative cuts so this particular pattern just has a little bit of background right down the center of it here. You could do either way. You could stand it apart by backgrounding it and you could dye those or um, even leave them. But then if you're doing some dye work, match it up with what's on your outside border and lots of different looks you can do when it comes to backgrounds. All right, now with our swivel knife, we're back for some decorative cuts. So first thing, let's go through. I'm gonna put some little curved lines in here coming from that outside edge, curving around on those, kind of the cups of those acorns there. Now I'm gonna come back the other way across there. Creating that kind of crosshatch look there on those acorn cups. And curved lines one way and then turn that knife and we're going to curve back the other way across there. The curved lines as opposed to just running straight lines is going to give that a little bit more of a rounded look, a little more uh, realistic curve to that. Those acorns are looking pretty good, but we can still touch that off a little bit with a few little cuts out here on the end. Kind of brings just a little bit more to them there. 
All right, now some decorative cuts in these leaves themselves. Always trying to keep from doing just straight cuts. We want to have a little bit of curve to them. Not going overboard. There we have it. Okay. That is our oak leaf and acorn pattern from volume two of the Leather Tooling Pattern Book. Uh, and that's actually available November 1st on the website, which is in the description there. So there's lots of other uh, patterns on there available as well. Uh, if you're looking for uh, a belt pattern with the oak leaf and acorn, that's on the website as well. So uh, if you follow that link, you should be able to find what you need there. Any questions that you have, shoot those at me, and I will try to get those answered the best I can. So appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and follow. So be sure to, to follow the page here so we don't miss out on any more videos. Take care.